Jake Ludington here at OpenStack Days in Seattle, and I'm with Sam Malahi from Zeflin. And you've got a talk that you've, you're presenting here about helping people understand that, that after they have implemented OpenStack, then what? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, so many of our customers now are implementing OpenStack. It's starting to be adopted in a much larger way in the Fortune 1000 in the United States. And all of those customers, when they're successful in doing that, their immediate question is, okay, well now what? Um, once you have the infrastructure down in terms of storage and networking and compute, um, they immediately start to think, well, what do I do about the workloads, right? And so now the question becomes, how do I automate the life cycle of those workloads on top of that infrastructure? And so we get into the config management and application orchestration uh, um, processes. And so once you've, once you've helped them kind of, uh, you know, get into that, what, what do people see? What do people see from an automation standpoint, from a process iteration standpoint? Where, where do you kind of lead them to? So uh, once we help them automate the infrastructure and the applications on top of that, we get them to start thinking about the whole life cycle. And the, the really important part is to get them to think about how, once they've automated these processes, how does it fit into the IT organization, right? How does it fit into the other processes that IT is executing on a day-to-day -day basis, like IT service management? Um, DevOps, for example, uh, many people think that DevOps is, is the implementation of a configuration management tool like a Puppet or a Chef or an Ansible. Um, but really the original uh, purpose of DevOps was to get application development organizations and IT operations talking. And that means that IT operations is in many cases IT service management or the IT service desk. And they're the ones that are um, they're out there interfacing with the end users of technology inside a company. Uh, and so really if you don't think about how you integrate that uh, and you invest in, in automation of infrastructure and applications, you've only realized a, a portion of the ROI that you can get because you still um, will have the, the, the Monday morning call storms where uh, there was an upgrade over the weekend and the help desk didn't know it was coming um, or somebody changed the production environment without letting the IT service desk know. Um, so you really need to think about that last stage of, of process integration. So how do, you, how do you help people along that journey in process integration? Well, we have, uh, we have tools and, and consulting practices that we, um, that we have that we've developed in order to help them through that, right? So one of the things is we have a product that, that integrates application uh, orchestration with service management. Uh, and also we have developed a uh, consulting practice that helps them along the way and helping, helping them ask the right questions in order to be able to do that. Are there any kind of uh, commonalities you see across the, the customers that you work with? Well, we, we support uh, uh, all verticals, really. We work with manufacturing, we work with healthcare, we work with retail, we work with telecoms, and they all have the very same problems. Um, and, and ending with, I will say, you know, their application development and, and IT operations, they typically don't get along and they typically don't communicate. And what we can do is we can really help them solve that problem, but they all, they all have the sim very similar problems.